So San Jose Public Library has this problem. We have non-library users, and a significant portion of them happen to be young professionals in their 20s and 30s. One of our strategic priorities is to boost awareness of library services and programs. So our idea was to develop a program, an after hours program, based off of the results from print surveys, online surveys, interviews, and focus groups. And what we determined was that a late night after hours crafting event would interest them. So we had our Thursday night insight upcycle craft program and we planned and promoted it in iterations. One with one day of planning and promotion, another with one week of planning and promotion, and another with four weeks of planning and promotion. And based on the one week, we thought with four weeks we'd have a pretty good turnout. But we were wrong. And we really needed to go back to the drawing board and really empathize with this demographic. And if we truly empathize with them, we'd know that they plan their events last minute and their plans are heavily influenced by the plans of their friends. So we needed to shift the focus from bringing them into the library to going out to where they are. So we started to research various events and venues in downtown San Jose. And we determined that a trivia night would be the perfect match for the library. Lucky enough for us, we have library staff that happen to have connections with Trials Pub. Trials Pub has a weekly trivia night on Mondays. The trivia night consists of 20 fill-in-the-blank questions. So we proposed a monthly Ask a Librarian trivia night in which each of the teams receive an Ask a Librarian ticket and they have an opportunity to receive assistance on one of two pre-designated questions. And the question, the, but there's a catch. The catch is that they must answer one of our yes or no survey questions. And it's easy, either about library service usage or their knowledge. For example, have you downloaded a library ebook or e-audio book from the library to your tablet or smartphone? And the answer could be yes, it's 2015, need I say more? Or no way, I wrote old school, it's all about the ink and paper. So with these answers, we maintain the relaxed and fun environment of the trivia night. Our next site is San Pedro Square Market. San Pedro Square Market consists of 20 vendors for eating and drinking and is a hot spot for live music. And San Jose Public Library has an established relationship with them. We've been presenting music and movement programs for about two years now. And this is the site of the original library game show. Do you know what, what? <laughs> so with the game show, it's a combination of trivia questions and head-to-head -head stunts. And because it's a production, it takes about 20 minutes for, minimum of 20 minutes for us to prepare the staging. And during that time, we're promoting our library services and programs through our slides. Through our, for example, did you know we're signing people up for library cards? We have an outreach laptop so we can issue and activate cards immediately on site. Did you know there's an app for that? Letting them know that the library is in the 21st century and from our interviews, we found that this demographic is very philanthropic. So we let them know that when they donate their gently used materials, they help fund library programs. So let's move on to the game show and the head-to-head -head stunts. This is the fan favorite. We have two, um, two favorite stunts here. One of them is called Tilt-A-Cup, and the other one is called the Candelier. And with Tilt-A-Cup, you have one partner who is bouncing ping pong balls on the floor, so it's at least one, and then you have a catcher. So the catcher has to catch one ping pong ball. As soon as they've caught it, they have to take the top one and bring it underneath and only hold that bottom cup. And they're gonna repeat that process until they fill it up with eight ping pong balls and eight cups. And as you can imagine, the tower starts to wobble. Hence the name Tilt a Cup. So the first team to, to accomplish this wins. And as you can see at the top one, we have like a rocky victory pose there. So the other stunt is called the Candelier. And the Candelier involves 
15 empty cans and four paper plates. And the object of this game, of this particular stunt, is to construct this reverse tower and have it remain standing for five seconds. So the first team to actually do this wins that stunt. Okay, so let's move on to the trivia questions. I know most of you guys can come up with trivia questions on your own, uh, but here are some examples of our library trivia questions. We usually have 10% of the categories will be a library trivia question. For example, what does the library service Mango do? Deliver delicious fruit, teach you over 60 languages for free, prevent the NSA from knowing what books you check out, or streams Caribbean music through your smartphone? Anybody know the answer for this one? <laughs> Of course, it's teach you over 60 languages for free. <laughs> um, and next one for programs. Of course, summer reading is our biggest program over the summer. What age groups can participate in summer reading? Under six, under 12, under 18. Breathing. Who said breathing? Yeah. <laughs> That's correct. All right. So for our final round is the pyramid of knowledge. And the pyramid of knowledge is... Roughly, it's like uh, the $65,000 pyramid, if you remember that game, or taboo. And you have one person who's going to be the clue giver, and you're gonna have another person who's the guesser. And in this case, uh, this is the time when the losing team has the opportunity to win the entire game. So that's pretty much the game show from beginning to end. We're able to do uh, four, uh, usually four rounds in two hours, and we've, been presenting the library game show since January of this year. So through the iterations that we've been presenting the game show, there have been multiple iterations or learning opportunities. And one of them happens to be we started off with about 16 categories. And we quickly learned that our contestants would say, hey, I still want to eat and I still want to drink. So <laughs> we quickly removed um, the number of categories down to eight. Another learning opportunity was the scheduling. So our very first trivia, uh, ter first game show was on uh, the same time as the Sharks game. And San Pedro Square is literally a block away. So this affected parking for our staff, and it also affected the partic participation of the game show. We had participants, but we would have had more had it not been for the um, sharks. All right. And for information gathering, we learned that as much as we want to get as much information from our contestants, they love regular trivia, but when you ask a lot of questions about uh, library usage, knowledge, attitude, um, I have a table trivia example right up above, and they don't do those. They won't do those. So they suffer from survey fatigue or survey burnout. So my suggestion, what we've been using is our infographic. Similar to the uh, tri trivia night at trials, just ask a yes or no question. Give them a dot and say, hey, yes or no. Uh, choose the corresponding age, and then you're done. OK, so San Pedro Square was not the only location that we presented the library game show. We also presented at South First Market. And the way that we were able to get to South First Market is through our connection with the San Jose Downtown Association. They're the ones that gave us to let, they let us know that they were interested in having a game show at their site. Now, one thing about South First Market is that it's about a 10th of the size of San Pedro Square. So we needed to prototype with one week of planning and promotion to really understand how to present that game show in that space. So one of the things that we changed was our um, wireless buzzer system and actually not having two teams but having multiple teams. And we also learned that we needed to use our portable projector. Oh, wait. Okay. So supplies and logistics, uh, things to think about if you're gonna have a library game show at your city. Staffing, we, have, we usually have six people, one person to host, two people to manage the stunts and the supplies, one person to do, be the slide turner, another person to issue library cards, and then another person to handle scoring and support any miscellaneous 
things to help keep the game show running smoothly. Audio and visual, you need to know what the site has available to you. Also know where the outlets are. You may need to invest in a power strip or extension cord. Storage, have a place for all of the materials, your stunts, um, replacement supplies, have them all in one place. And then of course you need to plan for transportation. How are you going to transport these materials from your branch to your car um, over the, um, oh gosh, sorry, I'm out of time. <laughs> okay, um, venues and partnerships, I'm gonna skip here. Um, they're very important. Uh, does your organization, things to think about in terms of best practices, does your organization already have a partnership or connection with a potential value venue? Do any of your staff members have connections with the owners or staff you wish to partner with? Have a proposal that is open and fair for the library or business to end the partnership and determine an agreed upon deadline for continuation or review. Keep open lines of communication before, during, and after events. To maintain, a help, to maintain a healthy relationship. Okay, game show takeaways. Again, seek partnerships within your library network, prototype to find out what's working, and try, try again. If you have any questions or comments, you can contact me at nancy.donnell at sglibrary.org. Thank you. Angela O'Connor is next. <laughs>